React Router DOM is serving over 10 million people per week, judging by NPM downloads, and it's an extremely reliable tool. But with all due respect, it's not the most modern. There's a new cool kid on the block. His name is Tanstack Router. It was released in the 1.0 a while ago and just received a really neat update a couple days ago. And honestly, the feature list of Tanstack Router is nothing short of extremely impressive. I mean, dude, just look at this. It's fully type safe. And you want to know what the installation is like? You put this into your Vt config file, you take this boring code from the website and paste it into a boring file, and that's it. The code generator for your TypeScript types is set up. Now, of course, this code generated file that we just pasted in the setup doesn't exist yet. And in order to create it, we can simply create a new folder and let's call this routes. And inside of this routes folder, we can create a new file and call it underscore underscore root dot tsx and this is simply going to be the entry point like the app dot tsx of our application in here we can simply export a const and let's call it route and this is nothing else than a create root route that we get from tanstack react router this takes an object and inside of here we can pass a component and this is nothing else than the main component that will be rendered on the home page of our application for example in here let's render out a div element and then let's create a link component if you're familiar Familiar with Next.js, this is super similar. The link is essentially the completely same thing, just client-side based. We can pass it a to instead of an href like in Next.js, and this can lead, for example, to the homepage, to slash. And now comes a pretty magic part, defining our first route. We navigate to slash right here, but we never actually set what component should be rendered when we navigate to slash. Therefore, let's create a new route or home route, and this is going to be index.dot tsx essentially just a single component let's call it const home page and this is going to be equal to an arrow component and inside let's simply return a div for example that is going to say home page now we need to tell tanstack router that we want to show this component whenever we navigate to the slash route and we do that by exporting a const and let's call it route and this is equal to a create file route create file route we get from tanstack react router there's also a create lazy file route this is extremely cool we're gonna get to that in one of the next chapters and this takes an object and by the way we also need to define where this route is going so in parentheses let's invoke this create file route and pass it a slash this slash just means for this path in the url we want to show this component there we go let's spell it correctly and we can simply pass in the component the home page that we declared right above to show whenever we navigate the slash now comes the magic okay this is the code gen part of tanstack router right now we're getting an error argument of type string is not assignable to parameter of type never and this is because tanstack router is fully type safe this is a beautiful aspect of tanstack router and because we've installed the vite plugin in the very beginning you remember this the tanstack router vite we can simply start up or dev server by entering yarn dev and this is going to create the routes for us it says processed one routes in 150 59 milliseconds and check that out the errors are all of a sudden gone and the reason is that a route tree.gen a code gen file was generated for us containing all the routes in our application in our case that's just one but you can see now we can fully type safe navigate in our root file for example if we enable the vs code auto completion we can see there's only one path and that is the slash path to the home page that we just created if there was another route let's create an about dot tsx so this is your portfolio site you want an about page let's paste this in let's call it the about component and also render that component whenever we navigate to the slash about page if we now save all of our files then we can see process two routes in 30 milliseconds and there we go the errors are gone the slash about is now included in the code gen file in the route tree.gen.ts and it is right here. So that means we can also type safe navigate to the slash about page wherever we import the link component. That is honestly magical. Okay, that's some pretty basic stuff. Let's get into more advanced techniques and you're really gonna understand why I like this tool so much. Now in chapter two, we're gonna make a massive improvement in terms of performance to or about route. Because imagine this scenario, we have a super heavy dependency right here in or about.tsx. Let's just console log this, but essentially it's the same as importing another super heavy dependency um, right up here. Let's just log heavy dependency. And what you'll see 
is if we go to Chrome right here and reload the page, even though we are not currently on the about page, it's just the root page localhost, um, we still load the very heavy dependency that is only present in the about page, which we can navigate to here. And I should probably show you the URL for this. Let's click this and you'll notice we're at the slash about now. And only now the heavy dependency should be loaded. Otherwise, this would be pretty bad for performance, especially if you have multiple routes. Tensec Router, of course, thought of this. So let's go back and the fix is actually really easy. Instead of a create file route, do you remember the create lazy file route from earlier that I told you about? The other create file route is now redundant. Let's get rid of that with a shift option and O. We can get rid of unused uh, import which is super handy. And now we can also mark this file instead of an about.tsx. Let's click rename and then let's rename this to about.lazy. Oops, dot lazy.tsx and then hit enter. Let's save all of this. Look at the console because all the errors are always gone when we save the file. That is insanely cool. The new routes were processed. We can see that right here, process two routes in 10 milliseconds. And now let's see what happens. Let's go back into the browser, into the home page, and ideally the heavy dependency should not be there in the console. And it's not because it has been excluded from the bundle because we told the compiler to please exclude this from the main bundle. And only if we navigate to the about page, we can see the heavy dependency only now is loaded, which is ideal for performance because we only need it now. And if we look at the code generated file, this works through attaching a dot lazy at the very end that just um, has a dynamic import attached it, which we then resolve. But what if things didn't go so smoothly and everything didn't just work? That's where the dev tools come in extremely handy. And injecting those into the page is super straightforward. We can simply head into our root file and in here we can pass in the dev tools. And these dev tools are nothing more than a regular component that we can install because in case you don't want it, you don't need the dependency to weigh down your application, but they're super useful. So we're going to say pnpm install at tanstack slash router dash dev tools. That's going to install the package we need for the dev tools. And once that's done, we can simply put the tanstack router dev tools component right in here. In case the auto imports ever don't work in your application after just installing a dependency, pro tip by the way, reload your window. That's going to make the auto imports work again. So once that is reloaded, we can simply go ahead and wait for the error that we're going to get when this has finished loading. And now the auto imports work. We can simply import that and that resolves all the auto imports. Now, according to the documentation, we also need to put something called an outlet right here. Honestly, I haven't checked what this does. I guess it just makes the dev tools work or whatever. And then let's start back up or development server. Once that's done, you can see a Tansec router icon appearing in the bottom left of our page. If we click that, there are the dev tools. Everything is in here that you need to debug the real time states. Like when we navigate, you can see the state is updating, the is loading and so on. Everything you need to debug and gain an understanding of what happens in the routing of your web page. If you're on the home page or navigating um, through the pages that you have, everything is going to be in here in real time for you to check out. Now, probably you want to show some custom things while your page is loading. And that's actually super easy as well. In the create file route right here, this takes actually a lot of stuff. As you can see, a lot of things you can pass in here. All of them are optional. You don't have to pass any of this, but things like the error component. What do you want to show when the page has errored for whatever reason? If you're fetching data and there was a problem, you can simply pass in a component in here. For example, the homepage, that doesn't make any sense, but any component will fly here. And same thing goes for the pending component. You can also define a separate loader. You probably have one component in your entire application that you can always reuse as the pending component. And now easily for the most magical part, chapter four, what I promised in the beginning, because this is awesome. And this just blows Next.js out of the water in terms of API design. I really prefer this over Next.js. It's Damn good, okay? So any link component that we have, like this one right here, same as a next, but it takes a bit more stuff. For example, we can pass something in here called the search. And the search takes any object, and this can be like a page one, for example, that you want to pass in the URL as parameters. And not only are these search parameters automatically serialized and deserialized by Tensec Router, no, they're also fully type safe and actually enforceable wherever we receive them. This is the magic part because each route also takes something called a validate search. This is nothing else than an arrow function that receives 
receives the params right here that we're searching with. Let's comment this out for a second, save it, head back into our browser and let's click the about. As you can see, that we are now appending the page one parameter to the URL because that's what we put in the link and we can now enforce that in a type safe way right here in our route. The params are gonna be of type record and this is always gonna be a string and we don't know unknown what the second value is gonna be. In our case, that's a page and a one for the unknown. And from here, we're gonna return an object, let's say page, and this is gonna be a number. Now these parameters are not yet validated, but this is where the validation logic goes. For example, using any schema validation library like Zod or, oops, Zod or Yup, anything works here to actually enforce that these parameters are passed properly. And whatever you return from here, like a page one, let's just hard code that, is then gonna be, check this out, available in your home page component. And in order to show you this, we have to turn this into a function actually. So this is hoisted function. There we go. Let's cut out the home page and you're gonna see exactly why I'm doing this right now. And that is so we can use the route in our component. The const search is gonna be equal to, and now check this out, the route dot use search. And this use search that comes from the route is type safe. It has whatever you return right up here, this return value that you can enforce using a schema validation library in a type safe way right down here in our components. So we could even go ahead and directly destructure the page from the use search and do anything we want with it inside of our components. This is insane. And if you need those search values to perform any kind of data fetching before you do the rendering, that is totally possible too, through the loader depths, the loader dependencies that allow you to pass data into the loading state of the component. So essentially, we could just destructure the search and then return that search right away again. And that means now that search value is available in the loader that we can use to asynchronously fetch data for our component. For example, if we need a, you know, let's just have a new promise in here. Let's get the resolve. Let's get rid of the syntax error and check this out. This loader now has available the depths and from the depths, we can destructure whatever we returned right up here. In our case, that's gonna be the search. That is now available for the data fetching process. While it's doing that, we can show the pending component if anything goes wrong. We can show the error component. And finally, we have everything down here in the use search hook ready to be used by our component. That is insane. Hey, I really hope you enjoyed this video. I think this tool is genuinely really nice. I'm probably gonna stay with Next for routing just because it has so many server-side capabilities, but if you're doing client-side only apps like I was doing at my previous work, this is super relevant. Learning this tool might actually be super smart for you, and I hope this video helps you in that process of learning. Check out this animation tool I made, left or right up here. It's a beautiful code animation tool you can use to make your code look hello nice and then i'm gonna see you in the next video have a good one and bye bye